So good morning, everybody. Uh, it's just gone five o'clock, um, and I've decided to go for a little walk through my local woods. I've had a night of not sleeping very well. Uh, I just thought I need to get up. It's rained yesterday and last night, so I'm hoping it's going to be quite damp in the woods, which should give some colour and a bit of interest. Uh, but it's sort of broken clouds this morning, the moon's out, um, sun's just coming up. So I thought I'd uh, just come out for an impromptu walk. I bought my Hasselblad and the Cambo and I bought two large format lenses to keep the weight down. Um, so yeah, this is uh, just a last minute impromptu, let's see what we get. Uh, I'm not expecting much, but if anything this is going to be a lens test morning. So I'll be testing the different lenses to see what they're like, the two lenses. Um, I'll talk you through those when we get them out. Uh, just to see what they're like on the Hasselblad. Right, let's go. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, just set up for a, a shot here. Um, it's not the uh, uh, greatest of images, but uh, it's more sort of test shooting. So you can just see here, we've got these kind of mixed crossover trees happening just kind of here. Uh, and then I've got these nice kind of lighter color trees stood up in the background. So I'm shooting a, a two by one panoramic on the camera. So I've got tripod uh, mounted. I've got the Arca Swiss. I've got the Cambo Actus. I've got my uh, Digis. I've got to pronounce these right. I need to learn how to use. I've got these Rodenstock Grandigan N, uh, 75 mil uh, large format lens on bellows. And then my Hasselblad on the back. Uh, so this is the shot that I'm shooting, clear the screen. As you can see, we've got those tr twisted trees coming through and then these uh, lighter, virtually coloured, uh, lighter trees in the background as a two bow on crop. So basically what I'm doing is test shots. So I'm setting the aperture all the way from 6.8 in the increments from 8 to 11, 16, 22, 45. So shooting each aperture and then just adjusting my settings on the back of the screen um, to, to get the correct exposure uh, of what I'm after. So um, shooting on the electric viewfinder. This is really cool because you can set your shooting times. That's really good, I know. So basically what I'm doing here is finding, so I'm using my histogram, which we can see here. We've got my metering down here, and then we've got my time value here. So basically I'm adjusting my time value till I get just slightly underexposed. So there we're shooting at 51 seconds, uh, and we're just underexposed at uh, half a stop. Uh, I'm shooting ISO 64. So the histogram isn't reading, generally, I think because it's too dark on the screen, which is fine. I've set the composition, the focus is there. You can just about see all these little cyan dots. That's the focus peaking. So that's telling me that we are in focus. So just grab the button, fire the shot, and then we'll wait for the camera to count down. And then once the camera's finished, you can just press the little play button and we can see the image. So we can see the histogram is very good. It's not blown out. Got loads of detail in the bottom. There's no underexposure. Clear the screen and that's the shot. So, yeah. So the idea then is I've got the same shot loads of times, uh, all at different apertures. So then I can go home pixel peep um, and decide how I feel how, how that lens performs at all those apertures. Um, I suppose Woodland's very good for this because there's lots of texture, lots of detail, and lots of things going on that you can look at. Obviously the only thing to consider is that I'm in a crop mode where I'm shooting uh, a two by one pano. So I don't have the corners, but I will have the corners on the raw file so I can have a look at that as well. Um, yeah. Uh, so let me talk you through the setup. Uh, of the the road stock on the cat on the cambo with a Hasselblad and let me talk you through the way I compose the image and the process that I go through so the way I set up is um, on the on the road stock lens you have have a little switch here which flicks between uh, shutter closed shutter open um, but that also allows you to remove the aperture ring so as you move the aperture ring you can see that the aperture opens and closes the way you would fire this lens is that you would uh, 
finger right, you would, where you'd fire the sensors, you would close that, get your aperture where you wanted. You'd, you'd turn this dial here, which is your time value. You can see the little dot just up here moving. So that's two, two, second of a, two for the second. You would cock the shutter with, sorry, from this back, let's cock the shutter with this here. You'd have, um, and then down here, you have a little cable release, which you would, which screws into there. And then you press the cable release and it fires. And you would have seen at the same time. I'll do it again so you can see, cock, and then you fire. You can see the aperture ring opens uh, and then that lets the light through. So that's how you would generally take uh, a large format image on a large format camera. Because we're using a digital back, we can do it slightly differently. We can use the electric viewfinder on, on the camera itself. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to adjust this lever here so that it's in the open position, which then opens the aperture. Uh, sorry, opens the shutter, so then we can control the aperture. I'm going to have the aperture fully open to begin with to let as much light in as possible. Uh, and that's going to allow me to, to compose. So we come to the camera. Uh, okay, there we go, camera's woken up. So we go into electric viewfinder here. Okay, so the first thing I will do is I will clear the screen and I will get my basic composition in. So, which I've already done for this image, um, as you can see, which is these trees in the middle, ones in the background, and then a balance at the back. The next thing I will do, being on the cambo, is I'll bring up my levels. So I've got vertical and horizontal levels, and I will use my uh, Alka Swiss to level the camera completely. So I want it absolutely super level. As you can see that I'm doing absolutely super level. What I really like about this Hasselblad is that you can configure the calibration which uh, I think is great because on my 5DSR, it was always a bit wonky. So I told, I could never rely on the level in the camera. I'd have to use an external level or use grids or whatever, which can be a little bit irritating. So that's the next thing I do is I completely level the camera. Once the camera's level, if I need to make any adjustments, so for example, if I need to make any shift movement, so to shift the camera left or right, just to get the composition how I want it, then I can do that. Again, if I need to make any rise or tilt, which I have done in this image, because I didn't want any sky in there, so I've brought the sky out, and then I've come down to get the foreground where I want it. So, roughly about there, lock that off. So, so that's the rise and tilt. You can literally see the camera moving up and down. Little lock off there, and then we've got uh, shift here which moves it left and right which allows you to really fine-tune the composition from that point of view there the reason you want to have the camera level is it's all about perspective so if you if you point the camera down or up you're going to get converging lines of, of the verticals and that uh, like especially with trees everything comes to a point in the middle or comes to a point at the bottom it doesn't look natural um, so we want that everything perfectly straight. Of course, we always want our horizon straight, less we're being artistic um, because it's a, it's a landscape image. That's, that's where we want. Once I've now got my exposure in, I then get my focus. So for focus, again, I clear the screen and then I find what I want to focus on, which I decided to focus right in the middle of these two, of these two branches here. And then I've got my focus dial here. And the way the focus works on these cameras is you don't focus the lens like you would with an SLR. So there's no focus ring on the lens. It's all done with the bellows. So it's the distance between the film back and the back of the lens. The back of the lens actually is about here because it protrudes a little bit from the lens board. I'll show you that one day. So then we have our focus gear knob here. I get roughly zoomed in where I want to be. And then we can rotate. So I've put onto here, it's called the fine focus gear knob. So I've got a large movement and I've got a really fine focus. So I can really fine, refine that focus. And 
I should have focus peaking on. Yes, yeah, so you can just see the odd dot coming. It's because the image is quite light, you won't see it completely. So now that I'm completely happy with that, I can zoom out, double check everything. Not so sure, I just want to bring it down, down a tad to about there. Check my swing, pull that there a little bit. So now I'm completely happy with my composition. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my screen to the to my um, exposure settings. So I've got different screens that I use, which is quite nice. So this is my exposure settings, which just tells me exposure. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my aperture. So in a woodland, I think, you know, um, well, before I learn this lens, I think we're going to go f11, um, which will give us a good depth of field. It's a good starting point. And as you can see, as we come back around, that's made an adjustment to the screen. The screen's gone darker. So we can see from the histogram that it looks quite dark in the histogram. And we can see from the metering as well that we're 1.9 stops down. So that's a little bit dark. So we're just going to click on our time value. We're going to add some more time. So let's try 1.6. So we're about, oh, that's two seconds, two and a half seconds. Yeah, so two and a half seconds gives us a, uh, a meter reading of zero minus 0 0.7. I think that's going to work when we look at the histogram. So again, use my gold button and we're just going to go click. Then the camera counts down, does its thing and shoots the image. And the next we can, thing we can do is just press the play button and have a look. So the first thing that comes up is the image and the histogram. Yeah, the histogram looks really good. So nothing looks like it's blown out at the bottom. Nothing looks like it's blown out at the top. And then there's the image, which looks quite good on the back of the screen. Uh, and then if I really wanted to, I can uh, zoom in and check focus. And yeah, the focus looks, it looks pretty darn sharp on the back of the screen across everywhere. Yeah, we've got some fall off at the back, but that's to be expected. Uh, this is just like I'm saying, testing at the moment. And I can uh, clear the screen. Yeah, so that's composing and taking an image on the Hasselblad. So now that we're back in the office, we can start pixel peeping at the images and have a look to see how the lens performs at its different apertures, which was basically the test for the morning. So the first image is shot at f6.8. Uh, we can zoom in, we're zooming in at 200%. Um, I could go more, and I have looked at 400%, but it's just a bit stupid, to be honest. I mean, 200% is fine. We're not going to need any more than that if we print uh, an on-screen, especially if we're looking at, you know, on smaller screens or whatever. So, yeah, so this is 6.8. So, yeah, I mean, where I focused is sharp. You can see that's really sharp. Uh, we can see the fall off of the bokeh in the background, uh, which is there. And you can see this, this trunk here starting to fall off. So... Not massively sharp, which is not going to be at 6.8, but we what we want to look at is the corners. So as we look into this corner, we can see that this front branch is still super sharp. I've uh, got a little bit of uh, colour edge in here, but I'm sure Lightroom can sort that out as we need to. But the edges look, look lovely and clean, and they're not distorted at all. Uh, there doesn't seem to be too much like barrel distortion or any weird wide angle effects. And again, as we look down here, slight sort of slight softness in this corner maybe but i'm shooting f6.8 so you know we're, we're falling out of depth of field to be honest at that point so i'm not too worried about that if we move to the next image so this is going to be uh, f8 again the center uh, zoom in i mean it's tack sharp isn't it i mean that looks that looks stunning uh let's have a look again at the corners again we've got a slight bit of vignetting not vignetting sorry a slight bit of color Contrast here. Let's have a look at that in a minute. That's again really sharp. Some nice fall off. Again, doesn't look to be too much distortion in the corners and around the edges. Again, slight fall off here, but that's right in the background. So depth of field is never going to get that at f8. Not on the, not on medium format or these, these on this sensor. Again, super sharp there. This corner. 
in. I mean, look, that's 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 lovely and sharp. It's just about in the focus plane. These leaves are sharp, but there's no distortion. That's lovely. It's a really nice image. We'll move up again to the next one. So now we're F11, which is the image you saw me saw me take. Again, going to the center. I mean, that is sharp, sharp as you like. And you can start to see we're getting slightly more detail in the background now. Compare it to that tree, which we compared to when we were looking at one of the earlier images, that's slightly sharper. Again, we look at the corners. I mean, that is that is super tack sharp. Nice bokeh, to be honest there, nice fall off. Again, no distortion whatsoever. Again, that is that corner looks fine. This was soft corner before, but it's not so soft now. Again, so that's a depth of field. And again, check here. Again, lovely. Doesn't seem to be any signs of vignetting either. Um, I can't really see much of that. So that's really good. We'll move up to the next next aperture. Um, so this is f16. This was shot at uh, 10 seconds. It's quite dark when I was shooting this. Again, wait for it to zoom in. Again, that's sharp. You can see the background starting to sharpen up as well. This tree is sharpening up. Again, we look here. Hang on. As we look here, yeah, again, I mean, it's, it's getting sharper and sharper as we go. Maybe like very cool, and there's a slight bit of, slight bit of distortion coming in. Are you really going to notice that in a 100 megapixel file? I don't think so. Look, look how tiny that is on the full screen. You zoom in. Um, stunning, stunning, stunning image quality. Yeah. I mean, and to be honest, I was, as you could see in the video, I was pretty tired. It was very early in the morning. I hadn't slept very well. So I'm not saying my technique was 100% because I don't think it was, to be honest. But the lens has, the lens is, is, Stunning is the only word I can use. It's amazing. That's lovely. Yeah, so sharp. Slightly, it's slightly out of focus, but again, I think that's depth of field. Right, let's move to the next one. So we're now looking at, uh, so this is 20 seconds. So this was F22. So again, tack sharp in the middle, really tack sharp. All these images that we're looking at here are completely unprocessed. They're the uncropped version. So they haven't got the two by one crop on them. Um, unprocessed. I've done, done anything with them at all. It's just straight from camera. Look at the corners. Okay, so we just, I think we're just starting to get a little bit of diffraction now. So if we compare this, so this is the F22. We'll go back to F11, same sort of bit. F11, so that's sharp. That's just starting to diffract a little bit in there. Very subtle. But that's just starting to diffract. Okay, so that's interesting. So what we can do is we can have a look. So let's go up to F32. We'll check the same corner. So this is F32, we can definitely see it's softening off here, which is diffraction. You can see though that colour cast has gone though. Those little sort of purpley orangey bits that were poking through have gone. Go back to F11. Check. Yeah, you can see this. So this is this is sharp. So we go to F twin F32 and it's not sharp. So right, okay, so now we know the limitations of the lens as we start getting to F. 22 and up, go back to that corner. We're going to start to diffract. And then let's look at the final one, which is F45. Again, same spot. So that's really soft, it's getting really soft there. Okay. So on, on large format, I'd expect more from the lens. If I was shooting on film or anything, but I'm not shooting on medium for my Hasselblad. So I know that my limitation with this lens is going to be F22, F16. So 
let's just double check this. So this is F22. Possibly exceptionally sharp. F16, which is 10 seconds, which is sharp. Then F11, which is F11, F16. Not a huge amount between it starting to go at f22 and then really going upwards okay so i know that i can push this lens to f16 comfortably and f22 if i really need to but uh, what a lovely lens i mean absolutely stunning absolutely stunning once i start using the the tilt movements as well though that will that will change it slightly because we're playing with the depth of field which will be completely different so yeah, so basically that's a great test, great test of the lens. I understand the lens now. I know where I can push it on this camera and I know how good the lens is. Brilliant. So let me finish this uh, video with the processed image. Um, like I said in the field, I don't think it's the, the greatest of images, but it's a it's a record, record in time. Um, and to be honest as well, I mean, these I'm struggling and I'm learning how to process these files. I was such in a flow with with my last camera and the way those raw files worked that I haven't quite I don't feel I've quite got I'm doing them justice yet but again it's a learning curve and it will take time um, when you get a new camera is, is one of the things you have to learn so yeah I hope you uh, I hope you like the image I hope you like the the video uh, please like and subscribe and and if you've got any comments I'd love to uh, hear what you've got to say so uh, I'll sign off now, um, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.